Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. In this episode, we're going to take a look at seven ways to improve your photos using Lightroom CC. Now, this is an online stream that I did back on Thursday, but I wasn't really happy with the recording quality, so I'm going to record it from scratch today just for you so you have the best possible recording to watch. So with that, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Now I've got Lightroom CC open. Everything I'm gonna be doing, you can also do in Lightroom Classic CC. So if you're on um, the traditional version of Lightroom, you can do that as well. If you're on the cloud-based version, which is Lightroom CC, you of course you can follow along. And even if you're on Lightroom Mobile, you can do 99% of what I'm gonna show you today. Um, so, and there's the 1% that you can't do. I'll, I'll explain what that one thing is that you can't do yet. But other than that, you can do everything I'm about to show you across the board in Lightroom. So let's start off with the first thing. The first thing you can do to improve your photos, whether it's a travel photo, a landscape, a, you know, a cityscape, or even a portrait, is to correct the lens correction. In other words, or to use lens correction to correct for lens distortion. So for example, I've got some uh, photos here that were taken with my fisheye lens and they are really distorted. And, uh, and, and you may be doing that for effect. That's why we like to use fisheye lenses sometimes. However, if you go to your optics in the details panel in Lightroom CC, there's an enable lens correction. And once again, this works across the board on all versions of Lightroom CC, whether it's desktop, classic, um, cloud or mobile. You can also check this box um, just for safety, remove chromatic aberration. This will sometimes, if you have this like green outline around your images um, because the lens didn't quite focus on the lighting just right, that will take care of it. Um, in most cases, you won't see a difference, but if you um, enable it, it doesn't harm the photo. And if the lens um, chromatic or the chromatic aberration was there, it will go ahead and remove it for you. Now, there are some other issues with this particular photos, like some dust spots, uh, but for the lens correction, this will take care of it. Now, there is one bonus tip. So this was number one out of the seven. I'm gonna give you a one plus. The one plus is under geometry. And this is also the one thing that, as of this recording, is not in Lightroom Mobile yet, or Lightroom 4 Mobile. But um, you have Upright, and you have Upright on Lightroom Classic as well. So if I go to Upright, I have this new guided Upright, or fairly new. And what this will allow me to do is say, okay, you straighten out the lens, but I still don't like the way these buildings are kind of leaning into each other. So what I can do is just go in and just drag two guides, two or more, um, along the edges of what should be straight up and down, like so. And once I draw the second guide and just let go, it will automatically make that correction for me. So the guided upright or upright controls are available on Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic CC, just not yet on Lightroom Mobile. Um, but this will also just help you straighten out photos. Now, it kind of, you know, it offers some distortion in other areas, but if this is what you were looking for, you can, of course, um, get that photo corrected. I'm going to show you one more guided example just because people like to see other things they can do this with. So, for example, if I go here, now this is not a skyscraper. It's not really distorted. It's just taken at a weird angle. So, for example, if I go back in to those developed settings and I go to the geometry and I go guide it one more time. Now this one's gonna take more than two guides to make me happy. I'm gonna draw one guide along the side of this window. I'm gonna draw another guide along the side of the window and that will go ahead and flatten it out, but not quite enough. It didn't turn it. So I'm gonna just keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? I would like it straight across here as well. That will start to turn it and straighten that window so the perspective is towards the person looking at the photo. So you can use these guided upright features um, for not just skyscrapers, not just buildings leaning into each other. You can straighten out all kinds of things with them. So that was number one, just applying lens correction and a bonus applying the guided upright. Number two is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to photos, and that is improper white balance. In other words, 
especially with people where the skin tones look too cold or too warm. Um, in this case, way too warm. They actually look yellow. Uh, and that's usually because of the lighting conditions in the room or not choosing the proper white balance when you were photographing in the first place. Now, um, you can correct the white balance, of course, uh, especially if you shot raw. Um, but if you, in any case, you can make a white balance improvement here in Lightroom. Now, there's a temperature slider. I can just cool the photo off. But what I usually like to do is start with proper white balance. And that's what this eyedropper's for. And normally what you would be targeting with the eyedropper is something that's 18% gray. And I'm not really seeing any things that are gray in this photo. I see uh, he's got on a shirt that should be white. She's got on a blouse that should be black. Um, and since I don't have 18% gray, I'm going to stick to one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and just click right here where this, this is like yellowish black, but this should be black. When I click on it, as you can see, it just takes that yellow tint right off the photo and now their skin tones are properly um, set. Now, sometimes proper white balance is a little too cold for humans, meaning that um, it makes them look too blue or too, um, you know, not human. <laughs> so we can go ahead and just simply drag the slider slightly to the right just to warm them up a little bit more, but not that, that way crazy yellow that we had before. So number two, fix the white balance in your photo. Um, number three, and this is, um, we can actually use the same photo for cropping. Now, uh, cropping and straightening the photo. I can see by the background here, this photo is kind of leaned over a little bit. So if we go to our crop tool, there is an auto that will try to auto straighten, but we can go ahead and just simply say, nope, auto, you didn't quite get that just right. I'm going to go ahead and just rotate that a little bit more. Now, of course, with cropping, you are cutting off part of your photo and you might say, well, I don't want to cut him off so much. I'm going to just leave that maybe turn a little bit and that's okay. Uh, but I also might want to choose a particular aspect ratio. And this is important, especially if you're going to post a portrait image to Instagram. Instagram will take your digital photos and it will force a portrait image to be cropped. This way you're in control of it by switching to that four by five aspect ratio and you can say, nope, I'm going to control where it's cropped and I get, I'm not surprised when I go over to Instagram because it's cropped exactly where I want it to be. And of course you can still rotate within that crop and it will continue to crop it based on that rotation and you can move your image around in the crop area and also know that any of these adjustments that we're making are non-destructive. So you can always go back and redo them. Now, if I were to go ahead and save this photo out um, and then post it to Instagram, it would show me exactly what I'm seeing here. I would not have to crop off anything once I get to, once I get to Instagram and it's exactly the way I want it to be. All right, the next one is probably one of my favorite new things about Lightroom uh, across the board. And again, this is on Lightroom uh, CC, Lightroom uh, Classic, Lightroom for mobile, and that is the brand new auto tone capabilities. So if I go to my lighting here, there's a um, auto button. You'll find that in the toning area of Lightroom Classic as well. You'll find it in mo mobile. And auto is not new. Auto has been there for a while, but auto is always based on an algorithm. Now auto is based on artificial intelligence, meaning that it looks at your photo, it compares it instantly to other photos like it that we know about and tries to give you a better starting point for adjusting your photo. So for example, if I were to um, click auto right now on this landscape that I took in Iceland, this is right out of the camera with no adjustments. And if I just click auto, it gives me a much better, more dramatic starting point to work with. Um, so this is way better than me trying to figure out what sliders to pull to try and get it to look like this. And I'm not saying that this is finished. If I want to tweak it, maybe I don't like the contrast lower. I like the contrast actually a little higher. And maybe I also want to, of course, straighten out that horizon line. So I want to get that horizon nice and straight. Um, and I can just keep going. So that gave me my starting. Oh, did I straighten or did I make it more crooked? Let's do that again. Let's get that horizon. There we go. Just line it up a little bit better there. Okay. Uh, but anyway, this will give me a much better starting point than what I would have gotten just out of the camera or me trying to futz with the um, futz with the various uh, sliders there. And I'm just obsessing over this crop. Okay. All right. Next thing. Um, 
So number four, never be afraid to click auto. Because even if you don't like the results of it giving you that new starting point, you can always undo it. So auto is just like one of those things, just every photo, click it. You like it, great. It's, you know, keep it and keep working on it. You don't like it, undo, and then do it the way you would normally do it. All right, so the next one, let's go back. Number five is I haven't met a photo yet that couldn't benefit from a little dehaze. Now, if it was taken outside in hazy conditions, like this photo back in 2010 that I took in Egypt, then it can usually benefit from a lot of dehaze. But if it's even inside shots or indoor shots now, I've noticed that I can just use a little bit of dehaze just to make the photo pop a little bit more. So under your effects panel, you've got the dehaze slider. And of course, you can um, you can make the photo more hazy. So if you're trying to create an effect, that's cool. But you can also just kind of get rid of some of that atmospheric haze and take a photo that you may not have used in the past because it was just too hard to get that haze out of it. Too many choices you'd have to make and you'd never get it out just right. And you can actually turn a photo into something that you could actually use. So for example, if I go to this one, same kind of deal. I get to a photo that I can actually use. All right, let's jump to our next one, number six. And number six deals with spot removal. So if you remember, if we go back to that photo that I kind of corrected here, uh, there were these spots in it. And luckily, there is a spot removal tool. There's this tool right here. I can make my brush a little bit bigger just using the right bracket key. Um, and on a US keyboard, I can just go ahead and click that. And now some of this is gonna be harder to do because they're not spots. So as you can see, I can drag this and it will go ahead and make those corrections. And when it's on a building like that, that could be kind of tricky because I would have to guide it down the building to, re to repeat that same window pattern. And here, this, this would also be kind of difficult, but you get the idea. You can go in and do some spot correction. And it will do usually a pretty good job if you can repeat the patterns. Then that may not always be feasible, like in this example here. So if you click, if you create one you don't like, you can just hit, simply hit the delete key to remove it. And now that becomes an artistic effect as opposed to a spot. All right. But anyway, let's go back to our main example here where we've got some spots here um, on the walls of Antelope Canyon that I took back uh, a few years back. And of course, oh wait, that's not a spot. That's someone actually jumping into my, my, um, my um, long exposure photo here. They're just like in the shot and they're not supposed to be there and they kind of leaned in. That's why they're all fuzzy because they weren't there the entire time. And I was like on a tripod just looking at them like, dude, really? You're going to lean into my shot like that? And so I never used the shot because I didn't want to crop into it that far. I don't mind a, a little bit of cropping, but that would have been too far to crop off. I would start cropping off this edge right here that I really liked. So I just didn't end up using this photo. However... Um, um, I could, of course, take it into Photoshop, but let's see what Lightroom will do with it. I can go ahead and just, oops, sorry about that. Going back and forth between the original. I meant to go ahead and make that bigger. Let's go ahead and do this. And we'll just go all the way to the edge there, and then we'll fill it in. And using the same spot removal tool, the healing brush, as you can see, it does a fairly good job. Now, the pattern may not line up perfectly, but luckily you can move this around. You can kind of get the pattern where you'd want it, or at least close to where you want it, where it blends in, and you can then go with that. So that is using the spot removal tool to not only remove spots, but also other unwanted elements in your photo. So, of course, once you start removing the spots, then you start seeing more spots, and you just keep going until they're all gone. All right, same kind of deal here too. Let me see what, um, just for kicks, let's go back to the lighting here and let's click on auto. I just want to see, ooh, look at what auto tone did, brought that out, made that nice and gave us that nice contrast and that nice moody feel that I like. All right, so with that said, those are seven, oh, that was six things, one more, one more. I almost forgot the last one. That was number six, the spot removal tool, number seven. The radio filter. The radio filter can be used for all kinds of adjustments, but one of the adjustments I like to use it for the most to make your photos look better is to relight your photos. So in this case, I've got this photo where, let me make sure I'm back on the original here. Let me go ahead and just reset it, revert to original. 
Yep. Okay. So the original. And um, I got this photo here where I was taking this outside. Um, you know, bright, sunny day, wrong time of day to be out here. We're kind of under a tree to kind of mask off some of that bright sun. But there's just this, this, she just doesn't have enough light on her face and everything else is just kind of like starting to get overexposed. Uh, so if I go in and increase the exposure so we lighten her up a little bit, that looks great on her, but everything else now is even, even more super overexposed. So what I'm going to do is grab the radio filter. You have the radio filter, graduated filter, and adjustment brush uh, or linear filter. I'm going to go ahead and grab the radio filter and I'm just going to go ahead and pull out one right on her face. And as you can see, it's doing the opposite effect. It's um, darkening her face and I could, of course could or lighten the background and lighten everything else. But anyway, you can choose to have this based on this. You can choose to have what it affects based on this invert box. So if I invert it, I could lighten her face and keep everything else the, the way it was. But what I really like to do is the opposite. I would say now that I got the entire photo exposed the way I want, except for the background is overexposed, I'm going to turn off the invert and I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to bring down the exposure, meaning keep her exposed the way I did with the overall exposure, but drop the background back down to a more proper exposure. Now, of course, this area is still blown out. I'm not, I'm not debating that, but everything else now, her dress and everything else about her has the proper exposure and it just adds that little bit of spotlight on her face based on the proper exposure that you made for the overall photo, but then darkening everything else using the opposite of invert. And of course, uh, while we're at it, I cannot not get rid of that one little distraction there. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So now we got our seven things to make your photos look better. So once again, quick, quick, quick recap. Let's go in and apply lens correction. So just so you know, you can go ahead and correct those, um, those lenses that just kind of distort the edges of your photo. This was an extreme example. Uh, number two, give, get yourself the proper white balance for your photos. Make sure they look good um, in, in the lighting conditions that they were shot in. Number three, uh, make sure you crop your photos to a good aspect ratio, especially for social media. Number four, using the auto tone capabilities to give you a good starting point. Number five, using dehaze to bring get rid of some of that atmospheric haze in your photos. This one's horrible. So for example, if we were to go in and first of all, if we were to uh, crop this photo down and get rid of the non sky. And then we were to go in and we were to say that, you know what, this might look good with an auto tone. And then we were to go in one more time and we we're to go to effects and we were to use that dehaze to really make this photo pop. We can really go from night and day from what we started with. And number six, using the spot removal tool to get rid of unwanted objects. And last but not seven, and last but not least number seven using the radio filter to um, expose part of your image without affecting the rest of the image so just darkening everything else back down and exposing just the face or just the parts of the image you want and yes you can have multiple radio filters multiple linear filters and multiple adjustment brushes throughout your photo so with that said that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Hope you learn seven ways to make your photos look better. And these are things that you can look at to apply to just about every photo you take. Take care, everybody. Cheers.